high school, some of the most greasy yet interesting years of teenagehood. We viewed fictional characters from all different forms of media go through high school. But is it reality? What is it really like to watch a group of high school students evolve from freshmen to graduating seniors? My name is Eamon Kelly and I'm a graduate of Science Leadership Academy, a school where an inquiry-driven, project-based modern education is something that is empowering and exciting for students. At SLA, our education is built around our five core values, inquiry, research, collaboration, presentation, and reflection. SLA has meant a lot to the class of 2016, and at this point, we have left a huge legacy. Now, I'd like to share what that has been like on behalf of my class. How? Well, since the start of our freshman year, I have taken the liberty of documenting our entire high school experience at SLA. Not only because I wanted to save memories of our experience, but because it's a great way of showing others what life at SLA is like. It's time for the class of 2016 to reflect on our four years at Science Leadership Academy. This is the four-year reflection. I'm just filming stuff. Yeah, I got that on camera. Come on. Hi, Amen. How's your camera? This is weird. I'm looking at a camera. Oh, is he? Oh. Wait, you got that on camera? Catch you on camera. Are you actually recording? Is it really recording? Is it recording? Oh, you're recording. Did you actually record that? Are you recording? Are you recording in here? Are you recording yourself? Why are you recording, Amen? Why are you recording this crap? Now it's recording. Wait, it's recording this whole time? Yeah. Ah! Yes. You're vlogging. Are you vlogging? Are you vlogging? Really, are you vlogging? Are you filming me? Are you filming? Wait, are you videoing me? Are you videoing me? Are you videoing me? Why are you videoing us? Are you filming me? 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 Why are you filming me? Are you filming Is it only recording me? Are you recording me eating? He's filming. He's filming. He's filming. He's filming stuff, guys. You're always filming. Are we gonna have three levels of meta filming? Record this. Hey, you can start recording. Oh, don't start recording. I'm eating. Don't record me. Stop recording me. Don't video me. Don't videotape me. Get the camera. Stop filming. I'd rather not be filmed right now. <laughs> don't film my mega fries. We can take a break from this. No, take a break. Do a weirdo. Don't film my food. Turn that on. Oh no, I said I didn't want to film your video. Put it away. Or I will punch it. Wait, did you start yet? I just did. Oh! Now what do you think is neat about the class of 2016? Like, like, uh, can you describe the personalities? <laughs> Something's wrong with my mustache. Experiment. Okay. It's plugging up its watering hole. Buzz buzz? <laughs> Hold on. What's happening? Just watch. It's being just like... <laughs> <laughs> you doing it again? Yeah. Do it. You lost your agent, you <laughs> I find it difficult to characterize any large group of people, but I will say that this class has some very unique qualities among SLA classes. This is one of the most driven groups of people I've ever seen come out of SLA. I think this class um, is kind of one of the classes that you see SLA trying to talk about and trying to model about kids who like really love their high school and kids who really want to give back and contribute to what they do. All right, Toby, just let it happen. Stop being a mother. Try not to make your steps too big. That yeah. could be another one. Yeah. <laughs> Back. One, two, 
No, you should be close in the in the right. seat. It's like it's like about this length. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the large majority of our class is really, really focused on doing something really, really big. The class of 2016 is literally everything you can think of. We are a very diverse group of a bunch of people who have hundreds of ideas. We have very strong personalities, everyone. Um, I think everyone wants to be involved. So Javier, what is your experiment doing today? Oh, well, my experiment, we're, okay, I'm called for it. Um, my experiment, me and my teammates are going to get together. And we're going to create, we're we're gonna, so, we're, um, we're gonna create fake snow, which is really fun because it's the holidays and you guys, right? I'm always so impressed by all the things that kids are doing in our grade. We have a lot of really talented people in our grade in so many different things. Uh, some of us are artists, some of us are scientists, some of us even filmmakers. And you gotta let it control you, right? Okay. Right, so you have it here. You <laughs> Be one with the cable chair. <laughs> <laughs> we have the Bell sisters who are like a tag team duo between photography and film. It was my noon, my midnight, my talk, my song. I thought it would last. Forever. I was wrong. So if you got one thing from everything I just told you, here's my advice. It's to spend more time in nature. I mean, how are they supposed to, like, that might be a hard thing to um, answer. Nature. We have like Rosalie, who's an artist, and then we have people that play the guitar and like can produce music. Once again, you've been hearing Felix Dermiol. and we have people that like play hockey or skateboard. We have so many talented people and so many talents and that's amazing. I think that's really, really great about our class. It's kind of cool to see them all. So we've got a lot of movers and shakers in our grade. <laughs> we've got a lot of creators, idealists, um, people who see positive change in the world and then make it happen. Good morning, Decians. Erling Clark here. Let's take a look at today's headlines. President Berg denies allegations of Smurf ancestry. Man claims his mother is Jesus. Chief Executive Eagle Scout discovers how many licks it takes to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop. And cats monopolize local condiment industry. I think that, I think with me personally, um, I just kind of try to move past it in my head right after I get more information. But I've tried to also be better with like thinking about how um, I interact with people, like, and my initial thoughts, because um, it definitely, like, when you think about it, like, on a larger scale, um, it definitely ends up being, um, like, a faction of profiling people, um, and it ends up being discriminatory sometimes, right, when you're not just being, like, a human being and you think something of someone because you see them, um, and so, so I try to like train myself out of that, but like again, it's kind of like a survival skill. Like if you see like a big guy, like I know like being a girl from Philly, when I see big guys with beards, like I immediately look down and stop talking and stop smiling because I don't want to get catcalled. Like that's just how, right? It's kind of, it's a survival thing happening there. And so if I'm interacting with that person in real life, then I won't do that. I'll look him in the eye and I'll talk to him uh, face to face. But when it comes to like just interacting with people in public, I think that still matters because you end up profiling people by accident. I've never got one stereotype about me that was just actually right. They're always wrong. It's, you know, they're either like, you know, like loud, ignorant, doesn't care about anything, lacks motivation, and all of those things are not true. Like, I'm not gonna lie. I get lazy sometimes. I don't have the best work ethic, but at the, at the end of the day, when I, when I put myself to something and I'm passionate about it, I get good results. 
Well, baseball has always been part of my life, like since I was five. So I've been playing it for a very long time. And then here at SLA, like how I got interested here, I was told about it, but I never knew who Herman was at the time in freshman year. So I just showed up. I saw who he was. Derek Jeter looking person, loves Walter White as well. You're already safe. Now throw me the ball. And notice how far away I am. And the ball is up here, and I'm here, and I'm not even here, I'm here. I'm literally in the air as the player. I'm the third baseman. I'm in the air. Throw it back to me. Throw it up high. Higher. <laughs> I was up there. And the guy where Joe, where you are, he goes. Out! <laughs> what? Uh, the player's in the air, catching the ball, a good five feet behind the base, standing over the grass. He's behind me as the third base coach. I'm literally here. The player's behind me. And they called our guy out. I lost my mind. And I'm like, he's in the air! In the air! Over and over and over again, just jumping and screaming. I lost my mind. He's in the air. Basically, the way I can learn that is from Mr. Herman, none other than uh, Derek Jeter. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> 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 Derek Jeter is a fantastic baseball player. He retired from the MLB two years ago, and he decided he wanted to be a teacher. He came to SLA two years ago, started teaching. Uh, photography and film, and uh, formed up this company, uh, Rock Cop Productions. <laughs> when we have a goal, we're going to follow through with it. Um, and I think a very good example of that is Anna and Leo's fourth floor literary magazine. This is SLA's premier arts and literary magazine, The Fourth Floor. Uh, as you can see, it is a beautiful <laughs> piece of uh, independent publishing. Uh, rife with the work of SLA's finest artists and writers. Or those who just um, actually submitted. Or those who submit. Uh, it is a submission-based magazine. Uh, it's run by students, it's fundraised by students, it's edited by students, uh, and the magazine's mission is to empower and promote the work and artists who create the work of the SLA. Community. They knew very specifically, they were like, I want to have a literary magazine for SLA students, and they did everything they needed to do in order to implement that. I think our class overall is very passionate. When you speak to individuals, they obviously care so much about what they're doing and where they're going. How do you feel about the fact that SLA is a school full of nerds? Uh, when I came here, I was, for example, uh, a little put off by how many nerds there were Everyone was a nerd. I am Osmandius, king of kings. What? I'm very proud about that. I don't think there's anything wrong with being nerds. I think it's amazing. If someone calls you a nerd, take it as a compliment. They're calling you smart. I love us being a nerdy school. It's the best thing ever because like being nerdy can range from being like into comic books or being into books or being like a film nerd. Okay, so the scene we're shooting is with Tenzin. It's when she's typing something, you know, we, like, we won't see what it is, but she's coding something, and then the power will go out and she'll get frustrated. So we're gonna have to work on some acting tips for her. Sort of extended she has no emotion. Hey, Jeremy, oh. give us, give us, oh, give us an angry face. Uh, <laughs> Please? Dylan, show me an angry face. I should. Ah! That's not an angry thing. That's not an angry thing. That's like... Uh, that's that's deadly. That, that was a jump scare. <laughs> yeah. yeah We're not scary. making a paranormal activity movie, that's it. No. <laughs> even by paranormal... Blair, Blair Witch. Even by paranormal activity slash Blair Witch standards, that was low. It's so broad, like, that you can fit in and find your niche. Like, there's no popular kids, because we're all just, like, a bunch of nerds who are so obsessed with what they love and, like, they embrace it and they embrace themselves and like I think that's what it's all about like not necessarily like the term nerd but we're people who have obsessions and things we love and care for so much that it becomes who we are and I think that's one thing that like puts us all together and like makes us stick. Me? What? Amazing! Oh my god, I want to go there. Oh my god. Zounds and abounds! Of X as X approaches the limit of X 
of f of x God, approaching nobody, nobody the cares. double derivative of nobody x. Nobody cares. Every stereotype you can think about a stereotypical high school does not apply here. <laughs> I'm kawaii Asian. No, you're not. Wait, what you get for your birthday? I got a testicle for my birthday. Isn't it cute? It looks like a teapot. It actually does. So we have a lot of club leaders in our grade. Uh, we've had a lot of club leadership in our grades since like sophomore year. We've had people who are leaders in the poetry club, in uh, the fourth floor, in the debate team, all sorts of athletics, you know? And I think that that's uh, probably pretty telling. I guess you'll just learn how to knit. <laughs> oh yeah, Kevin was at knitting club. No, just my girlfriend wanted to teach me how to knit. I got the hang of it within a minute. <laughs> secretly wanted to learn how to knit. I think that's unique. I think a lot of people don't find passions in life until they're in college or later in life. And the people here have found passions in many aspects of their life. I think that they are a very smart, a very good group of people. I can definitely see a lot of them will be going up to do big and better things. We're redoing the entire space to make it much more optimal for people to learn tool skills as you can see. And we built these yeah. tables, and the other room we built a new set of I'll tables where the 3D Wednesday. printers right. are now at, and eventually the uh, vinyl cutter and probably sewing will be in there as well. Hey Mia, what year is it finally? 2016! And how excited are you? So excited! Because I can't really tell based on your expression. But I'm also panicking because that means I have to be an adult and that's really hard. Is there anything that you remember from your first day of freshman year? Oh god, um... Ah uh, yes, it was an experience like never before when I first came in here. Well my first day, I remember being very nervous. Being like super nervous. Really really nervous. Definitely nervous. I was very nervous. I was very nervous actually. I was really nervous, um, and terrified. I am by nature shy until I know who I'm talking to. So whenever I start a new school, I am pretty much silent for the first two weeks, and then I will start talking. And I was just walking to school, and then here comes a mom, and she's like, hey, are you going to SLA? And she had her daughter with her, Caitlin, and um, I'm like, yeah. And she's like, oh, that's so cool. We live in the same area since we took the bus in together. I was really intimidated because there was a bunch of people like crowded around the entryway. Clearly the upperclassmen had IDs, but none of us had IDs. So we were, we had like no idea what to do. And like, we didn't know how to like sign in or what was going on. I remember walking in here and just thinking, you know, this is high school and like looking around and, uh, just, just taking it in, like, just taking in the fact that I was going to be meeting all new people and making all new friends, new teachers, and just remembering, like, that, that atmosphere of high school for the first time. Um, I remember just, like, all the freshmen just, like, in the cafeteria, just, like, packed together, um, like, people with people who they met uh, from Summer Institute and then people who they went to middle school with. I was the only one that came from my middle school. Um, so like in the cafe I was alone and I was just looking at other people and I was like, wow, I want friends too. I was sitting in a chair by the window trying not to cry because I knew absolutely nobody here. I didn't know anybody at SLA so Caitlin and I just like sat together in the cafeteria. And I remember during lunchtime, uh, Soledad came up to me and she was like, why are you alone? And she like invited me to her friend group and I thought that was very nice. So we were walking to our advisories and then I just remember like a bunch of upperclassmen and they were like, hey freshman. And then like, you know, we were like, oh, look at the little freshman. And then I was just like terrified. I'm still not a very like large person. And so you can imagine how I would feel as a freshman when much larger people were just walking past me. It was really interesting to see um, how everyone interacted, right? Because it was a culture shock for some kids and some kids were used to the environment. Um, and it was just kind of like 
this really hectic, loud, all over the place kind of deal happening. I think for us it was super impactful because we all came from middle school and it was like, you're big kids now, so here's your schedule and here are your classes and you get to walk to your classes by yourself. The rest of the day was just walking around with that paper in front of my face, like trying to memorize my class schedule and get around. I had, I got mixed up with my class schedule and I ended up being late for my biochem class and I walked in and uh... I was really confused. I very quickly told people that I was uh, gay as the year went on, but I remember uh, the one particular statement that somebody had said to me, um, we were talking about the new uh, Batman movie, The Dark Knight Rises, that had just come out. I wasn't a great big fan, but I liked Anne Hathaway as Carol, and I thought she did a good job with the wall. And uh, I remember my friend Jade said to me, well, yeah, that's because you're a teenage boy who, uh, you know, and she's Anne Hathaway in a tight latex, uh, tight latex suit. And I said, well, actually... <laughs> Part of loving yourself is just knowing who you are. I think that, um, you know, with gay people, like, you know, we had, um, you know, hundreds of years of suppression. And because I have the freedom now to be more open about it, I I choose to express that freedom. I want pe and you know, I think that when we make ourselves invisible, then we silence our voices, and silence is death. And so I think that by not being silent, I allow myself to live more. It was, it was really, really interesting. Um, I remember it was super fun and I was really happy the whole day. I think the class of 2016 is very well put together. We are all so hard working. Which is wild. Class of 2016 is a, it's a strange class. We have several small groups of friends who also have other groups of friends and like everyone has different personalities. Even if you're not friends specifically with any one person in our class, you're still friendly with basically everyone in our class, so like you can ask pretty much any of the 120 students for help on anything and they'll be willing to help you. It's weird because we're all different and we're all completely like opposite of each other and yet we all still kind of connect in a way. should not be confused with dashes, which are longer and have different uses. Or with minus signs, which, are, which is all- Different- I didn't see the what use of the yeah, but you can't what do you mean you see it? You're just like- no, you can't prove that you were talking about a dash. You have hyphens coming out of your head. But that's the whole different thing. We weren't even, I don't even know what we were talking about, whether we were talking about- You lost! Now let's look up Dash. Did you know Dash is bounded by Khloe Kardashian, Kim Kardashian, and Kourtney Kardashian? It's Kardashian. probably the stork. Oh, it is the stork. <laughs> it's just a broad array of people. I feel like we're just like, special. Hey, I'm in high school, so it's supposed to be the best. Let me make it the best. It was like, you know, you're in the forest and there's, a, there's an oasis. This was like a sandwich oasis. I was so hungry and I was like, better than anything you could ever imagine. SLA, we have a very, well, I feel like we have a very close relationship with a lot of teachers. A lot of teachers are, tend to be very friendly. So that sort of chemistry between students and teachers isn't really, even teenagers and adults, isn't even really seen elsewhere. 
I think here it's it's very very special. The amount of emotional investment that teachers bring to the table, that students bring to the table at SLA is unparalleled. We are able to communicate with one another on like a deeper personal level, which I think is really rare. Uh, I also think that the teachers like us a lot because we're so awesome. So. Learning. <laughs> we're learning today. <laughs> Uh, everyone, especially the students and the teachers, it's uh, there's great communication between us. You have a problem in one of your classes. You need help with something. You can go to your go to your teacher. I know uh, math isn't a strong suit for me, but out of all the teachers in this school, I trust uh, Mr. Latimer, uh, my calculus teacher, the most. I had him write my letter of recommendation, and he's uh, even though it's my worst subject, probably probably the teacher that makes me feel the smartest. Now who's this bitch? Uh, it's Latimer, if you can't tell. Uh, I think it's picture perfect. Though he says he hates me for doing it, and hates it, so... Oh, even, he's even wearing the full Latimer outfit. My teachers and my advisors, I treat them as my friends, and they are my friends, essentially. Of course, I do, there are limits, you know, I don't go around, you know, acting like how I would with my friends. GTFO! essentially, but, you know, they, it's enough to, you know, joke around with them, you know, mess with them a little bit, and they take it, like, lightly and stuff like that. It's really nice. You wanna see this, you wanna see this, uh, this lovely utensil to disappear? Come here, come here. Okay. Oh, look at that, it's gone! And he's dead. Funny, he's been impaled on the pencil, right? Yeah. That kind of looks like a spoon or a spork. You can have a very funny joking relationship with the teachers, uh, teachers will be there to help you, they remember you, they know your individual situations, and they treat you more like, they treat you with more respect, they treat you more like an adult and a colleague than you would probably experience at any other kind of public school. It's Tuesday afternoon on a Tuesday. It's Miss Kickness's class. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Class is starting. <laughs> when we need them, they're here for us, um, and we can help them out when they need help also. You can talk about sports with them. You don't even have to talk about their subjects with them. So here's my microwave, which I exploded a cup of coffee. Was anybody here? <laughs> I put a cup of coffee in, and I meant to push heat the coffee, but it's a new microwave, and I pushed cook the pizza. <laughs> and then I went about my business, and then I said, what is that sound? <laughs> what is that? And I looked over, and the coffee was running down my new microwave and my new refrigerator. It was quite the scene. What's your answer? Okay, what is LaSalle? LaSalle University is correct! Oh my god! Oh my god! It's an animal! You definitely want to just, first off, get all of this kind of extra tension out of the cable, right? Mm -hmm. So the easiest way to get out of the cable is kind of just pull all the essential basic tension that's there out. And then once you get to the end of the cable, there's still some left in there. Okay. And now you just want to hold on to one side and kind of coil it and let the cable do it for you. And eventually it's going to work its way all the way down to the bottom. And I had my first production teacher look like Dokes from Dexter. And he was a mean man, but he was a really good teacher. And uh, he would not let us hand back a cable that didn't look exactly as we received. Yeah, it's always in my locker. You know? Big man, too, right? So then this is how I gave the cable, and this is how the cable comes back. Make sense? Don't do it. Please don't do it. Now you go do it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's all good now, right? Now you go do it. <laughs> <laughs> He's so rude. Yeah, I'm just going to sit here and drink my awesome. No, Natural first you gotta pull it Adido Ethiopian coffee and watch you. <laughs> no, it's running back and forth and painting colors with them. John Coltrane, Philadelphia. We're lucky to have somebody like that in Philadelphia. What is this? This is an essay for Fibot. 
man, that first like phrase, like I'm like, what? <laughs> that was why I was like, wait, what am I reading? <laughs> Black and white. Even if I put in a color movie like My Neighbor Totoro, who's seen this movie before? My Neighbor Totoro. Ooh. Yes. Oh please, when you it's get so a chance, good. it's, it's so one good. of the great movies. It is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, kind of forgot which class you're going to. What? To, oh yeah, 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 totally, yeah. Exactly, exactly. They were, Mr. Black was like, he, he thought that like I hurt my back or something. <laughs> <laughs> like. It allows for the students to feel comfortable with their opinions and to push their learning forward by asking questions and not being afraid. I always think of SLA kind of as just like the model of what a school should be or what people want a school to be, right? Like the teachers here love their jobs and the teachers here love the kids that they teach um, and they're good at it, which you know is like, just it's a complete anomaly to have a full staff of teachers who are good at teaching and who are smart um, and love to do it and they care so much about us. A lot of kids text their teachers, a lot of kids have very close relationships with their teachers. What struck me as very interesting at SLA when I first came here was all, how all teachers are, or most teachers are very happy to accept your friend request on Facebook uh, and very quickly will give out their number to you and you know you can text them if you have a problem. I have a bunch of teachers phone numbers and then I'll like, you know, text them. I'm in a book club with Amelia and Miss Gignis, reading Pride and Prejudice. I personally text uh, Mr. Herman a lot, and so like that's how close uh, the students can be with the teachers, especially like when like you're like dealing with a lot of stuff at home and having a lot of like personal issues. Like you know, my advisor like called me and was like, "Hey, how you doing? You okay? Let's set up like you know, what's the plan?" How are you feeling? Let's figure everything out. And it was like a phone call for like half an hour just to like to make sure I was okay. I was really close with Miss Eccles actually. She coached me and we went to England together and Miss Eccles was great because she was like a good role model for a woman in physics and she was willing to help me out with physics and teach me things that she didn't necessarily teach in classes. But she was also a good person to talk to personally like if I was having problems at home or anything like that. The teachers and the entire staff really uh, not only care about the students, and um, they also really trust the students and value uh, students' opinions, work, ideas. Oh, it's sticky, but then it would like start to come off, and you'd be like, "Oh no, I'm gonna fly away, and I haven't had this place down yet." <laughs> does the theoretical icing on the theoretical planet donut change the amount of gravity? No, and I asked, and it's layered, so it's icing cake, icing cake, icing cake, like all the way down to the earth. So okay, so then it's not like but once you get past it's the icing. Exactly. The I think it was cal the density was calculated with both glaze and cake. And the other thing that raises a huge concern is that over seventy percent of the Earth is water. And that would just lead to a really soggy, gross glaze donut. <laughs> what if the water is made out of glaze? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, just oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's the most nauseating thing I've heard all day. <laughs> so then the earth would basically just be a bunch of glaze with a little bit of cake. Yeah. Yeah. It would be the delicious donut, for the three minutes that you, you were alive. But you wouldn't want to eat the donut planet anyway because you'd pollute everything so bad. It would be like a donut you can roll down the street and then try to eat it. But it wouldn't matter because we all have three minutes to live, so you might as well just eat. Or, or you're just like, whatever, I've got three minutes to live, I want to see what space is like, and you just jump. <laughs> what exactly? Gave this kid the idea to turn the planet into a giant blaze donut. A song leader. Okay. What? <laughs> I have a very close relationship with Mr. K, who was my freshman English teacher and my um, like poetry mentor because I've been active in poetry club for all my time here. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not sure he really believes it's you, Mr. Secretary. I'm just saying. That's great. And then I, I, I think you're also, are you coaching the basketball team? Is that right? I am, yes. <laughs> Well, we're learning how to play basketball. So. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm also his SAT. An SAT is a student assistant teacher, and they are normally seniors. They kind of, it depends what their role is in the classroom. I would like to say I'm a part of the teaching team for my classroom, and I help facilitate discussions. 
I promote positivity and I support my students in whatever they need. The hallmark of that is our advisory program, where every teacher here is an advisor for 20 kids. They stay together all four years. That is a primary relationship in your life. As a student and as a teacher here at SLA, it's a relationship between making and advisories. What do I love the most about being a teacher at SLA? Well, that's actually very easy. The kids. I love being here every day, looking forward to hanging out with the kids. That's easy. Uh, during lunch, you know, Groups of kids just come in and sit and spend time with me and we just joke around and have a great time. Uh, I like that it is not a prison-like environment, which is true of a lot of schools in Philadelphia and around the country. Um, and I, it is more than just not a prison-like environment, it's a family. Are you being celebrated on a Friday this year? Because <laughs> it's Friday, like... Oh my God, what? I'm not going to be here. I have no answers for you, Mr. Herman. Yeah, yeah. For a moment, I thought you were also not going to speak because you're a bee, and I was like, what? <laughs> Buzz Buzz? I believe it might be completely <laughs> insane. Buzz Buzz? <laughs> My favorite part is um, the advisory program. I really love it, connecting with about 20 students, or 21, and just helping them along the, their path from 8th grade to, to high school graduates. I enjoy that, that just not just the academic conversations we have, but also personal development. So I enjoy that a lot. The first year, it's like raising puppies, and then it becomes watching phenomenal things happen and waiting for things to click and waiting for maturation. And I love watching people. So it is really, it is watching people come into their own and having access to that. The math version of that is, mm. you know, seeing students either ninth or 10th grade year and then again as seniors in Calc. Um, and I just, I really love the unique perspective of seeing, it, but advisory is so much more than that because it's every single year you're with the same students, so it's, it's really nice to just literally see students develop and grow and turn into the people that they're going to be at the next stage of their life. We're very comfortable. We have, I'm in Latimer, Oklahoma, and I think we're very comfortable, probably like more comfortable than we should be. When Mr. Latimer announced that he was having another child, we all like immediately came up with names. Really guys, this is the best you can do? <laughs> They're very much based in what happen, happens in the real world, right? Mentorship relationships, um, relationships in which you're really um, collaborating with each other, not just sort of have this teacher up here and students sort of just receiving information. Hey folks, this is Mitchell here. I'm, I'm recording our advisory. Hope you like it. Yeah, yep. Yeah. We got our, we're, we're having our Jasmine read the memo here. Let's get a closer look. SLA community, please take some time during advisory to make SLA look stellar and shiny. We don't have to do that, so this room is not being used for We're at a point where I think we've come full circle and we have a, a nice little group here. With my advisor, I, I just know that I can always go to her. She, uh, She's really been like my rock through this four years and that's been like amazing. It's being, it's like having a second mom that's like here at school. Freshman year, like everyone was either the same height as me or just like a little bit taller. And then like as each month went by, I'm like, yep, everyone's getting real tall. Their level of maturity has gone a long way since the ninth grade. And I mean, I loved them as ninth graders as much as I love them as 12th graders, but it's really cool to see them um, almost become, um, you know, in some ways like peers, you know, like I could talk to them in the same way that I talk with my coworkers, and um, yeah, so that, that's like a really interesting process to observe. At first it's a little bit, you know, intimidating because it's a group of students who know Senorita but they don't know me, um, but I would say within a really short amount of time, a week, a few days, I felt very welcomed. Um, they were really great at, you know, coming to me and treating me as their advisor as well so I wasn't just like an offshoot but I felt like part of the community which I think um, they did really well in welcoming me that that way. My old advisor was VK and he left I think uh, junior year in the middle of junior year uh, to work at Drexel. Our advisor switched so it was a little different because um, we got close with VK and then he left. But um, I got Mr. Camel, who is just like the best <laughs> advisor ever, very close to him, and he's very like matter-of-factly with me um, and loves me very much. Mr. Camel had like 
a kind of a struggle kind of adjusting because he was new to the school first of all and then he was just thrown into an advisory that like midway through um, the year. I did pick up that advisory halfway through last year and it was interesting because they had already established a group culture within that advisory. So it was really, it felt like I was coming home when I walked into the advisory for the first time. And I think for them too, because they'd all um, had an opportunity to be with me as students. It, it, it's such a privilege to be, um, to be in a position to be able to be trusted by, by those students, you know, to have those conversations. Mr. Camel has been the best. He's like a dad. So um, we've had a lot of fun. We call him the daddest teacher. Mia was sitting at, um, uh, at lunch and then she was talking with Molly and a few of the other girls. Dylan was there, and I forgot Rosalie maybe. And they were talking, and, and I heard her say, um, "Yeah, oh, Mr. Camel, he he's the best baddest teacher in the whole school." And I'm thinking, the baddest teacher in the whole school. <laughs> All right, the baddest teacher. And, and then I it started reflecting on it. I thought, no, it's impossible. I mean. There's so many teachers that would easily be the baddest teacher way above me. Almost all of them, as a matter of fact. And so um, I said to Mia, Mia, did you just say that I'm the baddest teacher in the whole school? She goes, no, you're the daddest teacher in the whole school, Mr. Cowell. You misheard me. They, they still say, Mr. Cowell, you're the daddest. And maybe, I don't know. Uh, maybe it's because of my age, but I do, that, that's just one of, one of many examples of where I just have so much fun with students here. Hi, I'm Mr. Campbell's advisory! Woo! It's a definitely a very a roller coaster relationship because you have a lot of things you, that you go through personally as well as the students. Um, it's a lot of, it's challenging with a sense balancing everything you have to do as a teacher here and then also managing and helping and supporting 21 students. It can be challenging uh, at times, but um, it's well worth it, so yeah. My advisor, Mr. Bay, who is like my school dad, I can text him and talk to him about anything. He's more of an, a counselor to me than a, a teacher at anything. He really truly is like my second dad, because I can talk to him about anything, and we always talk about different things, and he's helped me over the years get through different insecurities and obstacles. Being able to talk to um, teachers, and having people that actually like noticed when something was wrong. Like I didn't have to come to them and be like, something's wrong, because I don't like to do that. I don't like to burden people with my troubles. Like I had my old history teacher, Mr. Baird, come up to me in the hallway and he, he like he touched my shoulder and he was like, What's wrong? He's the first teacher to ever come up to me and notice, like, actively without me being in his class, without me saying anything, without him knowing anything. He just knew. Like just by my vibe that I was off and to me that spoke a lot. Hold on guys, I'm on a roll. He went no shoe shot, he got told him First thing I said to my mom when I came home freshman year about our teachers were that they were cool, that they were like us, that they respected us like adults, and that it was very much like we were friends. I feel like it's really like a, a second family. Teachers are like our family. We have just this close relationship with our teachers where they invest in us. Um, if you give them that, kind of commitment back. The way I always describe it to people is like the teachers don't talk to you. Like when they're teaching, uh, they talk like with you. They're not just authority figures. They can be like friends and you know, it's pretty relaxed, especially with advisors because you know them all four years and Bay's just pretty chill guy, so. This is all because it's of this small, um, close community and having that relationship with the teachers is really important to driving our learning forward and to becoming the person that we want to be. And I think that's what makes SLA very uh, unique is the teacher-student relationship. It's the last advisory ever.
You're just like your mother. You don't appreciate anything. I don't understand what your problem with my mother is. She is another mouth to feed in my household, and she will not grow up to be a doctor or a lawyer. I guess it's bagels again for dinner. We don't have anything else to feed the kids. Well, so much for their health. Project-based learning is like, it's a lot more hands-on, which I love because I'm really creative. I think when schools only have tests, that just doesn't contribute to scholarship whatsoever. Uh, it doesn't contribute to your peers' learning. It doesn't really contribute to your own learning. Anyone can take a test. I'm not a good test taker. I can't test to save my life. Whereas with projects, they're kind of everlasting, and you get to demonstrate what you've learned in your own creative way. Projects at SLA are uh, a very interesting way of applying the information you learn in the class. They really let you know what type of person you are. <laughs> My favorite thing about projects at SLA is probably that they're challenging but also interesting and give students a lot of opportunity for doing kind of what they enjoy. 80% of all statistics are made up on the spot and these are not on the spot, these are cited. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> they teach us hands-on learning instead of just simply copying things from a textbook and taking exams and proving that we can fill in bubbles. I think projects give us an outlet in which we can show off our different kinds of skills, our creativity, making videos, presentations, and preparing us for the real world. Even though the projects are given by a teacher, it's like, it's you who really makes the project. We're assigned, like, an outline. Like, this, like, this is your little area and you just fill that area with whatever you want and as long as you can connect it to what we're talking about, you're good. Kittens Gate Productions set out to find an answer to these questions and to unearth the mysteries behind our beloved currency. If I walk into a store like this one and can buy one candy bar for one dollar, then a dollar is worth one candy bar. This buying power, this exchange capability, is a dollar's value. But this value is always changing, hourly, daily, and throughout history. When people want my products, and I have a lot of them, the value of the dollar increases because they can get more of them for less money. But when the supply is low, which it never is, the dollar is worth a lot less money because there's a lot more competition for my products, as there should be. There's no teacher really telling you, I mean, there's guidelines, but there's not telling you, you I want specifically this, this, and this, this, right? They tell you, okay, you know, all I want you to do is, you know, let's say for English, um, I want you to, express what Shakespeare was thinking. Boom, that's it, and then it's up for you to interpret that and for you to make a project on which, like, you know, how you learn. To be, or not to be. That is the question. Whether well, tis nobler than mine to suffer, the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms, get to see a trouble. Come hither, my dear Helen, sit by me. Nay, but her here is metal more attractive. Just a fair thought to lie between the maid's legs. What is, my lord? Nothing, nothing. However you may express it, either in um, making an art piece, or making a radio piece, or I don't know, a dance, anything you want, really. And that's what I really like about these products, is that it's really up to you to decide how it comes out, the product to be. The first move, bring your right arm up from your hip, then rotate your hand using supination and pronation. The muscles employed in this move are the biceps, brachialis, brachioradialis, and flexor carpi radialis. I'll never forget the Pythagorean theorem because I had to like do a mirror project where, you know, I had to like measure all of these right angles. The Pythagorean theorem takes its name from the ancient Greek myth genus Pythagoras as shown fabulously holding, ironically, a 3D pyramid. Who would have thought? Pythagoras actually spent a few years of his life in Babylon, which is actually very suspicious for the following reasons. 
Ancient Babylonian clay tablets were discovered later in history that had the concept of the famous Pythagorean theorem, which obviously wouldn't be called that then, which actually predates his discovery of the theorem itself. So it's suspicious because he was in Babylon, where the knowledge theoretically already existed, and then went into others into Greece and discovered it, and got fame and a cult following for something that theoretically he learned in Babylon. So, was Pythagoras actually the one who discovered this widely used formula named after him, or did he just take something he learned from someone else and claim to have found it himself, like so many other people throughout history? And that's when I ask you, fraud or genius? Do we think that he stole it, or is he just that thing? You actually have to try and like work with people and manage your time so you're actually completing these projects on time because that's not something you can throw together the night before 95 percent of the time. I had 30 students in advanced chemistry put on a museum display of just incredible, incredibly creative interpretations of the stuff we had been learning together over the last two months. Miles Chris Barnett did a rap about chloroform and made like a music video for chemistry senior year. Six, one, seventeen, carbon, hydrogen, chlorine, C, H, C, L, three, it's a chloroform party. Six, one, seventeen, carbon, hydrogen, chlorine, C, H, C, L, three, it's a chloroform party. Chloroform, you smell so sweet. Carbon, hydrogen, three, chlorine, tetrahedral, molecular geometry with C sub three B symmetry. You got carbon in the middle with a single bond of hydrogen, two electrons, and what it's gonna be happy from it. Carbon's only got five, it needs three more. And chlorine's a halogen, it adores, so it takes three, it takes one from each. That's three chlorine with eight apiece. Those are single bonds, count one, two, three electrons, and carbon's happy. CHCL3, chloroform, please listen to me for some more facts about this complicated compound I am here to inform. 6, 1, 17, carbon, hydrogen, chlorine, C, H, C, L, 3, it's a chloroform party. 6, 1, 17, carbon, hydrogen, chlorine, C, H, C, L, 3, chloroform. One that I thought was really cool was physics last year when we had to build those circuits. And Nache and maybe Carolyn, I think, and Morgan, I forget who exactly it was, but they made a dress and they put a circuit on the bottom so that when you lit it up, the bottom of the dress lit up and it was really, really cool. I designed the dress with circuits and the lights flashed and that was really cool. Uh, I think that it was a really amazing project because I got to incorporate something that I'm really passionate about fashion design into uh, physics, which is really cool. I don't know how to wire circuits. I don't know how to make a light bulb work other than to flip the switch on, okay? I don't know, I'm, I'm not about that, but we decided to show that through having him wire the circuits, and I painted a portrait of Ziggy Stardust and the um, spiders from Mars, and the little spiders were light bulbs, and then he wired it and it lit up. It was like, hey, look at this colorful art, look at how we collaborated, because you know how I'm bad at math, but he can't do art? We came together and look at this beautiful love child we had. Like, the fact that you're able to just like, totally do your own thing and show your personality and get really into it without being totally constricted by guidelines is really awesome. Clean! Energy efficient! Cost effective! What are you doing? I'm trying to live a healthy life through running while charging my phone. But it's so hard. You know there's a better way to do that. How? Through the magic of physics. Whoa! Using kinetic technology, we can transfer the energy from the movement in your arms to your phone. Whoa. Wow. Thanks. Well, what if I told you that just by typing, you could charge AA batteries? No way! That's right. Each key has elastic energy stored in it, and several hundred students type several thousand keys per hour. Through this innovation, just by typing, we can continue to recharge batteries, reducing costs, waste, and environmental harm. No extra typing. No extra hassle. Just extra energy. Now that's a plan to get behind. One thing that stands out a lot is that when you walk into a history class, you don't expect someone to assign you to write a play but that's what you end up doing in your history class. Let me break that down for you. It means that we have the power to create whatever is needed or suited to the situation. You can't take the Constitution for simply what it is 
Every situation does not fit into the confines of what was written. That's why there's the elastic clause. We were oppressed once before. Britain is proof that the government is, is full of tyranny. Uh, the future of happiness for Americans is based out of government, not wasting time on the laborers, not laboring people under the pretense of caring for them. I really enjoyed running for president in Mr. Todd's American government class with my uh, team. That was very memorable and fun. We uh, did decision 15. Run for president, pretty much like run your own campaign and have one of your fellow students run for president. campaign, my own little party of um, my peers, and they helped, um, you know, we did things like create campaign posters, made videos, speeches, things of that nature. To all Americans, I accept your nomination for the presidency of the United States of America. You should vote for Josh Burke for president of the United States. Oh yeah, and one more thing. This ad was paid for by the Humanitarian Party, not some corporate fat cat super PAC. I will dedicate a large portion of the federal budget to education. Because you care, I care, and together we will unite to change. Your votes mean so much to us. Please vote for the impartial party Tuesday on election day. There is a president, a uh, political strategist, um, a speech writer, campaign manager, and a vice president, right, a vice president. And it was really fun because I had to compete against my other pe uh, peers and my classmates. We got to like debate on these topics that we, not even we didn't agree with them, it's just it was something that we thought up of and it wasn't something that we had to conform to, so it was making up our own political system and like, like yes, we're passionate about this and not this. This thing is okay, but you know what whatevs, but... It's called the Freedom you Party. If you <laughs> oppose this party, you're opposing freedom. I think you learned a lot more about the inner workings of uh, political campaigns. My group won, actually. In the end, I did become president, um, which was great, but it, the whole process in itself was really fun because it felt... I love competitiveness and that was great about it. It was so cool. I was so disappointed that it wasn't the benchmark. It was like a game in a sense that that was spanned over the um, maybe a month or so. So it was a really long game and it was really fun and um, I had a great time. President Brandon Yam 2016 everybody. Woo! Oh no, 2015. Oh, pretend I didn't say that. I'm Josh Berg and I approve this message. That happens in a lot of like humanities courses specifically. Like you're in an English class and suddenly you're making a movie. Oh, clearly our benchmark. So I worked with Eamon. We had to create a benchmark that could have really been anything as long as it like connected with like a certain like idea. And so we decided to make a film trailer. Do wanna live as an untold story? Rather go out in a blaze of glory. I can't hear you. I don't fear you. I live now cause the bad dialogues. A lot of people don't know who I am, but that's okay. The real me is out there online. I don't fear you. Cause it's Eamon. So what else does Eamon love to do besides that? It's not unusual to be loved by anyone It's not unusual to have fun with anyone But when I see you hanging about with anyone It's not unusual to see me cry I wanna die Besides the point I think everything that's come out of the Digvid class has been amazing. It blew my mind that they were able to produce that kind of work. Like, it looked like actual films and everything. of our senior year in the senior district class uh, where we had to
create and conceptualize a TV show. We called it Sundown. I had a great time sort of coming up with this thing and then working with some excellent uh, peers to bring it to life. That was excellent. Oh, great. Now the walk hey, Rebecca, you got a uh, flashlight I could borrow? The lights went out. We heard. Sure, help yourself. Thanks. I almost tripped on the way out of my apartment. All the projects that I do in Mr. Herman's class, I'm really proud of. Uh, Mr. Herman, he teaches uh, digit and photography, and so uh, those uh, filmmaking and photography are like my passions, like I love doing them. It was hard to chase, but good to catch. And oh, it could change the world with just its hands behind its back. But it did not come and I am not to speak of it, though I think of it. We had to make this uh, Super Bowl commercial. It was really funny because I just went around. We had to explain what life is without um, cable and with cable. Yo, bro, what's up? Uh, so there, me and the guys are going to a football game. It's an Eagles game here in Philly today. Uh, tickets are only $40, so you should totally come around, man. It's really cheap. $40? Yeah. I mean, man, f that. Let me see my cable bill! Behind you, I feel like I need a dollar. I can't, I gotta pay for my freaking cable bill. God damn it. Yo, Shaq, can I borrow a dollar? I ain't got no money, I have to pay my cable bill. Yeah, that was probably one of the funniest thing I ever, like, projects I ever made. Oh my god, you're the Applejack guy! I can't believe this! You are famous because of me! I threw the apple! Oh my god! What are you doing here? You're supposed to be in Hollywood! When you forget your Netflix password, you become bored. When you become bored, you gamble. When you gamble, you lose your wedding ring. When you lose your wedding ring, you sleep on the couch. When you sleep on the couch, you don't sleep well. When you don't sleep well, you wake up late. When you wake up late, you rush. When you rush, you get hit by a skateboarder. Don't get hit by a skateboarder. Don't have Netflix, use Rough Cut Media. We have a chance to explore our own interests while also, you know, following directions, but we also have like, freedom to be creative and all. We did this project in statistics where we had to use statistics to like um, create a casino game which I think you know students don't really get the chance to do projects like that in other schools. Hi guys and welcome to the game of Circle Circle! Hey guys do you want to play a game of Catch 25? What? What's Catch 25? This is Catch 25. There were a lot of Spanish 2 projects that I thought were absolutely hilarious. El correcto cosmético es muy importante para borrar tus imperfecciones. Ahora tú eres el hombre más hermoso del mundo. Bravo. Si conviertes en fanático de los Cowboys, estarás lastimada a un partido rival. A, B, C, D. With the songs specifically, when we had to write songs for his class. Necesito ayuda. It was like the funniest thing I ever done. I wish it was my project, a sophomore year Spanish project of we had to like make a music video and like make a song for it. And there is a really good one with Amen and Miles and Brian and Kevin. It was just so funny. Necesita ayuda, of course. Mi nombre es Jorge, voy a decirte sobre un septiembre cuando vi a un hombre Estaba muy pálido y él no habló, él desapareció, yo tenía miedo Yo pienso esta, un fantasma, fue enviado aquí para atormentar mí No me digas estoy loco, bueno tal vez un poco, pero yo prometo perder es lo que yo digo Vi un fantasma, necesito ayuda, necesito ayuda 
necesito ayuda Yo tengo miedo Necesito ayuda Necesito ayuda Yo necesito ayuda Everything was great about it. Like, we all had a good time. I, I play it in my head every single day. Necesita ayuda. Brian made the video freaking funny just by just saying his, like, lyrics. El me sigue en la escuela. El me sigue a mi casa. El me sigue a todos los lugares. El tiene calcetines a lunares. Voy a parpadear y vas a desaparecer. Those projects, specifically the ones with the songs, were probably the most memorable for me because I think that was just a very unifying moment for us because we were, all of us were just like, what we've produced is nowhere near our best work, and that's fine. We're doing cap sounds. I've noticed that typically with capstones and a lot of projects, they're typically a little more driven. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm having a blast looking at all of the different um, uh, capstones that are coming around, or whether it's your project, whether it's Jonas and Miles and the solar uh, phone charger. Um, my capstone. So uh, adoptable cats and dogs uh, from Morris Animal Refuge are here uh, for like a de-stress event so everybody can like hang out with them, be like, oh my god, so adorable and relax. But I'm not very relaxed because I'm running around like a chicken and I'm really excited and I have to go do things now. Unbelievable diversity of capstone projects that I think also sort of are wonderfully representative of the diversity of the class. But we can't afford to be deflating. Plus, we always affording to be debating. Man, please, let's start integrating. The National Bank, Jesus Christ, I'm done hating. Thomas Jefferson, I'm tired of all your hating. What, a minority? I think you're just hesitating. Do you know what? My money be circulating. <laughs> Federal government institutionally limited powers not delegated, they cannot be uninhibited. You better go back and find a less terrible solution. You realize that because you're reading up the Constitution, we founded this country, but we're still on the boundary of free and the Constitution, and we don't take boundaries. You might as well give Washington a crap and a palace. I guess the future just isn't enough for you, Alex. <laughs> My week is it. My reading isn't weak on the great federal constitution. We don't see eye to eye, but I'll give you my resolution. Tax and regulation is in the documentation. Proper and required, passing laws for the nation. A national bank, this is what is proper and required. To get the funds I needed since the articles backfired. But I don't expect you to see that, Jeff, my fellow. Could you spend your time slacking off in Monticello? Every time we talk, it's the same song and dance. I'm going to say it, dude. Get your ass back to France. I've been defeated. In their energy and creativity to bring their own personal view and perspective um, and likes into the way that they learn and into the way that they express that learning. And the projects themselves also tend to be really fun, uh, really creative structurally, and it just makes the process all that more enjoyable. I like the creativity of them. Sometimes they're a little generic, like you expect them, but other times they can go really out there and be something that you never expected to do in school. I'm not a fan of tests at all. So with projects, you can really you can show how you understand a certain topic from doing a project and you can talk to your teachers about it beforehand and during it and you set deadlines for it and it's a lot more abstract than taking a test that just you do it once, it takes about an hour, then you get your scores and that determines how smart you are and how much effort you put into it. A test only shows you how one way of learning while projects you have to put in the knowledge, the process, application and all of the different variables. Make. The way I'm assessed with projects allows me to create my own time management skills and um, plan out like my work as I'm going, so it, it makes me feel more confident in what I can do. Later on in life, anyway, I'm going to be doing something that I enjoy, so why spend my high school career 
doing things that I don't enjoy. If you give me more freedom with something, then I'm more likely to do something I like to do. And then I'm more likely to actually do the project and take care in what I do. Showing him how cool, how fast. No, that was awful. Keep on going. Even though it's annoying, and even though we get a lot of work, you learn so much more because it's your own experience, and you're very, very close to it. They really, it's really just a creative outlet in a sense. These projects so for creativity and um, expressing yourself. Remember us, you pig! Oink, oink, oink. <laughs> Looking at yourself now as a senior, how do you compare yourself now to before you came to SLA? Ah, uh, wow. When I first came to SLA, I was a whole different person. Freshman year, or before SLA, I was really determined to fit in a lot. I definitely did not like talking to people. I was very elitist. I was super shy. I was much more of an introvert. I think I was weird, but not this weird. I was a lot more scared of everything. Oh, I was a complete idiot. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Now look at your man. Back to me. Back to your man. Now look at me. Sadly. He isn't me. But if he stopped using Old Spice and switched to New Spice, he might be able to beat up anybody who teases him. Watching a group of kids go from that freshman year to the senior year is just really wonderful. The funny thing is, is it, you know, uh, it happens in what feels like the blink of an eye. FIRE! There's always these funny moments where, you know, you look at a senior who's doing this incredible work or what have you, and you sit there and go like, oh my goodness, you were a freshman yesterday. I think I've really changed a lot throughout high school, um, more than just the physical, my physical self, because before I started I was under five feet and had a high voice. Today I will be addressing the pivotal issue of the Keystone XL pipeline that is currently awaiting President Obama's approval to be built. You, you know that, um, you know that kid, uh, Clark? Clark, yeah. From your tech class, the pale one? Oh, yeah. Yes, um, so, uh, no, I was thinking, yes, okay, we get it, we like the flowers. Um. <laughs> I mean, and it's on every level, right? To see the sort of really brilliant but raw freshmen turn into these very polished kids. Buzz, buzz. <laughs> it's really wonderful to see kids who came here and were asked to work harder than they ever worked before, and then as seniors, handle that with grace and you know, sort of a plum. So, how do you feel about the fact that we're graduating in a few months? I'm very nervous. I'm scared because mostly capstone. I want to be excited for prom and graduation, but right now I'm really focused on my capstone. Very stressful. <laughs> Kevin, would you like a banana nut? Okay, that, wait a minute, did you just say banana nut? What is a banana nut, Jackie? A banana nut. A fruit? Okay, look, I know you're going through some hard emotional struggles, but that is definitely a banana, Jackie. Like, I'm very conflicted at the moment. Yo, Hop, do a Nicolas Cage. Do a, do a Nicolas Cage? Yeah. I don't even know how to do a Nicolas Cage. Oh, yeah. These are just like, got ah! <laughs> I can't really choose just one moment where I was just like, oh, this is great, because there's too many of them. One of my favorite memories was just like a class in general. I think it was freshman year, K's class, uh, drama class. It was <laughs> a really fun, really active class. Like, uh, being a freshman, uh, 
I think that class really helps you open up because you get to express yourself. I think it was a really great day when I finally met friends and I met people that I talked to. I'm very shy. I don't really talk to other people before they talk to me. So I thought I would have a really hard time to make like really close friends. For me, it was a really good experience because everyone was so open and they um, talked to me first and they reached out and so I think that's a good memory for me, like the fact that I was able to make friends in such a short amount of time. I think it was really cool that first couple of days when I thought I was terrified and scared and nervous and then all of a sudden I meet all these great people and they end up sticking with me all the way through to senior year. I remember coming downstairs to lunch. Uh, it was just a normal lunch, nothing special about it. But just seeing all my friends sitting there, it was, it was a good moment just to know I had so many people. I didn't know English. <laughs> it was pretty difficult, but it was an interesting period. It's like all I wanted to do was <laughs> learn English and be able to have a conversation and be able to understand what everyone is saying. Like when someone is laughing or being, you know, getting mad or whatever the teacher is saying, and just I'm sitting there like an alien and I'm just like, ugh, I wonder what they're saying. But yeah. I guess I worked my way through it. Probably the first time I ever slammed for SLA. Um, and this is kind of an example of how 2016 is a unique class and very supportive of everyone in the class, like no matter their affiliation with them. I cannot recite, reminding me that there is a God because only he could create this nose that resembles an upside down mountain and take this beauty that we call symmetry and remaster it. Pretty much like the whole freshman class was there and they were like sitting in front. And this is back when Slam League was at the TFI. Slam League has gotten significantly bigger. I really felt like we were all getting along and we were all, like I really, I really felt like a class, like a, uh, a connection to everybody at the class. What has happened that I have just laughed so hard that I just couldn't stop and just made my day great? I don't, I don't know. We had a power outage. A lot of th good things happened with power outs. I remember another power out that happened sophomore year. My friend Kevin ended up picking me up and I had chocolate milk in my hand and he started just <laughs> shaking me all around like a crazy person and my chocolate milk was flying everywhere and it was all very fun and enjoyable. My memory is of one of the last days of freshman year. This day there was a really serious downpour and my friends and I from Rosetta Stone just went out and we stood on the third floor balcony and we got a little soaked. But it was just very poetic. I don't know, it felt like an accomplishment to feel at home with these people in this environment. My greatest memory would be all the stuff that has been done in this area by me, my friends, my peers, my colleagues, etc. And all the ways we can take advantage of it. We can go over to Drexel, TFI, all the cool places, all the cool places in Center City, etc. <laughs> So I changed who I was completely. I'm a totally different person than I was four years ago. In fact, being at SLA for as long as possible makes you change each year. I'm a different person than I was three years ago. I'm a different person than I was two years ago. I'm certainly a different person than I was last year, or maybe even six months ago. I went through a personality roller coaster. So freshman year, Mitchell, he was crazy and wild and had fun with everything, uh, but Sophomore year and junior year kind of took some rough emotional hits, but I've sort of pushed those aside and I'm looking forward to the future. I guess uh, SLA has made me very, uh, made my outlook very future oriented. I'm able to sort of glide along currently with more planning and acceptance that things will get better. You, all the other children have left. We need you to take over the bagel business. What about your real children? All your, all your, all your other ones. Why, you leave me in the bagel shop? I have dreams, I have ad aspirations. I'm a completely different person. Like I go back on Facebook every day and I can see the pictures. I'm still actively deleting the pictures. I'm a whole different mindset, a whole different view on the world. I'm like, 
how I think is different, how I speak is different, how I act, dress, everything is, this is a whole other person. Like, if we were in the same room, you would think we were two completely different people. Oh my god, let there be lights. Oh, okay. hey, you missed it all. Because I got up. Get this shot. He messed it up. Record this. And tell it to the whole world. He ruined my masterpiece. Back in middle school, I was really shy and really quiet, kept to myself kind of guy. But now I'm more out there, I'm in your face. Not like, like in a menacing way, but like in a great way. I thought it was because I put a, um, I, like, you know how the Union Circle had like grid lines on it? No. I thought maybe I put a negative on the grid line and he didn't see the negative, right? No, I get it back. And I put 36 degrees instead of 360. <laughs> I forgot the zero, and then he was just like, Bruh. circled it. He was oh like, my oh. god. He was like, oh no. <laughs> SLA was the first time my opinions were challenged, and at most schools I would be, and those would be challenged, but they'd, I'd also be you know, insulted and yelled at. That didn't happen at SLA. Before I came to SLA, I was really shy, and I was really kind of awkward, and I don't think I'd ever met another kid who was like me. There was 13 people in my grade in middle school. And I think coming to SLA and being around other kids who like like Doctor Who and things that were considered kind of weird in middle school has really made me realize that like I do have talents that are special and that I can use one day and it's made me be like more open and more confident in myself and like just really excited to get started with the future. I don't know, I think I'm the same person, just like a little more confident. I'm more confident. Um. I think before SLA, I wouldn't even be doing this interview. Like, I'd be like, oh no, I don't need to be on camera. I don't need to be a part of that. Hey guys, Bean. Hi! Do you like your video? <laughs> I'm a lot more confident. I'm definitely more confident. I'm a much more confident person now, because I think that the school has given me the tools to move forward and to approach college. She got into college. Just like a weird She got into her pops. <laughs> Someone got into college. I did! I got into Juliana! I'm so happy! Guys, I really thought I wasn't going to college. Like, I really, like, had accepted it. I applied to Peace Corps. Like, there was... I was like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. What was it like taking on the role of guiding the senior class in the college admission process? Um, it was really exciting to be honest. I really enjoy helping others. I want to be a teacher and helping people through a very stressful process is awesome because uh, first of all I had to be ahead of my process and ahead of the game to make sure that I knew what I was telling other people and teaching them. and. You know, seeing people fill applications and getting their acceptances back now, that's so awesome to see and it's been a very rewarding experience, definitely. I feel more confident, I feel more understanding of what I want to be in life, and I definitely feel smarter. I'm that man! I used to only think one way about things, now I think about them from, like, my idea is, like, first I have to not only think about this from my perspective, but other people's perspectives, to fully grasp the concept. Today marks the day that Nimbil has become preppy, and it's the end of the world. If I was at a private school, a K-12 through private school, that I could have stayed on uh, for 12, like, for um, 9 through 12, and I, like, my first step of coming out of my shell and that, um, and being less scared that Hesley helped me take was that I just decided that I was going to leave my school and come here. This is so Inception! I know that I used to be a lot more shy and introverted and I think that coming to SLA has provided me with kind of the environment that I needed to break out of that and, you know, talk to students that I related to and have like a comfortable, safe environment for me to be who I wanted to be and figure out who that person was. But just being able to come to an environment where you knew you were safe and you knew that people cared about you and where everyone was supportive and it was just like having a family when I didn't really have one because like I've, as I said, like had a lot of troubles with that and just knowing that you were safe and that you had a network of people that actually cared and actually noticed and wanted to help you and didn't just feel like 
they had to make sure you were okay out of obligation. And I think I've grown a lot from freshman year because I know that I can't always sit through things quietly and do things on my own and try to like be strong all the time because obviously that doesn't always work. Um, even just like thinking about it or talking about like that experience, I'm not like crying because I'm sad, I'm crying because of the warmth I'm remembering from being taken in by people at the school and being allowed to continue to go here and being allowed a chance, which is something I never got anywhere else. People here were really understanding and they talked me through it and gave me the tools I needed to get through it, which was really great. What SLA has taught me is that if I have the wish to do something and I apply myself, I will be able to do that. There's so many times where before I came to this school, I would give up before giving things a second try, a third try. I would just, if it didn't work out, I'd give up. When I came here, I was pushed to keep going with it. I don't want to say take care of myself, but be kinder to myself because I Occasionally still I'm like very hard on myself, which isn't fair to me, you know, and then so like being here and like, you know, life events and all the teachers and students like I've learned how to forgive myself and be like, it's okay, you know, this assignment's going to be late, not the end of the world, you know, relax, have a cup of tea. What people think about me doesn't really matter anymore. Um, SLA taught me to just, you know, be myself because no one can do that better than I can. As a person, you really learn to be empathetic because of SLA. We really want everyone working together. So where do we get our energy sources? I'm literally in the middle of talking. <laughs> I'm asking where do we get our energy Okay, I'm in the middle of talking, don't interrupt me. Ourselves stronger first so that then we can go into those countries. Without energy sources? <laughs> Are you, can you shut up? <laughs> then help them as a strong Energy list though. <laughs> 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 Mr. Todd, you can copy. Um, there's so many different people here, and so you can't stay in an ignorant bubble. You, it gets burst when you come. So I think the most important thing is to to take time to understand other people. I wasn't that too aware of what other people experience in their life, and coming this way, I, I got to see that. I viewed other religions, other races, other views, and sexuality and gender and politics and that's very very good because you become becomes you not only become aware of other people but you start to become more aware of yourself independence and um how to manage your time i stay organized almost no um every single day i come to school get ready for college that, that's probably the most important thing help me get ready for my life help me get ready for my future help me what i want to do in my future my teachers teach me certain subjects and make me get interested in it. I think the SLA has taught me very much more than just like how to be a good student. I think it's taught me how to very much how to be a better person just because of the people I've encountered, the way that I work with and learn from and um, have confrontations with adults. Like I said, like it's for me, SLA has really just taught me how to grow and how to be okay with growing and how to understand that everything goes through a maturation process. And high school is only four years and high school isn't the end of your maturation process. I love this place. I think that high school sucks. 
um, and it doesn't matter where you go. High school is this social construct that we go through where it's hard and it's painstaking and I've gone through so much in my four years here and I've like and it's been hard for me and I've had good times and I've bad times and I would not have wanted the times to suck ha to have happened anywhere else except for here because I don't think I would have gotten through it. If being part of the community of inquiry and care has mattered to you over these last four years, and I think it has, um, know that your job is to recreate that culture and that community wherever you go next. And know that all of us here at SLA believe that all of you um, can absolutely change the world. And, and we can't wait to see what you do next. I'm just really happy I came here. Like, it changed my life, for the better, definitely. I like potatoes.
This is so much fun. You should do it too. Oh my god, Buddy Holly, I love you! Oh, will you sign my breasts? <laughs>